the Joe Rogan experience. When you see David Blaine manipulate cards, you you realize like, oh, okay, like there's levels to everything. Like David Blaine can do crazy shit with cards. Like he did shit with my daughter. Like he like did these card tricks, and I was watching everything he did, and I have no idea how he did it. Like. Well, he did things where like cards would he have a stack of cards and he'd keep tapping the stack and the stack would go smaller and smaller to those like two cards. You have no idea how he did it. You're just looking at him like, what are you doing? Like, it's like he's got access to time travel and he's like pulling those cards out when you're not looking and then coming back to normal time. Like it didn't make right. Hey, so I, I know how to do a couple minimal card tricks and I'm not very good at them, but like I, I have an idea of Prove what's it. happening. <laughs> you need trick decks and shit for the ones I know. I'm not like it's not. I'm not good at them, but he was freaking me. Yeah, out. I was watching him do one. I swear, I was like, I'm gonna catch him right now. I'm gonna fucking catch him. I was f- two feet from him and he did something. I don't even. It just disappeared. How about the ones where he did where the guys were holding his wrist? We had our security guys hold each of his. Ri- he asked them to do it. Hold each of his wrists. He rolled his sleeves up, and he made these cards disappear. And you're like, what is happening? Oh my god! What are you doing? <laughs> what are Magicians you doing? He's a master are crazy. of more than just card. It's like psychology and like yeah. misdirection. Yep. He's mixed it all together at a well, level that we can't understand. He's so advanced. Yeah, I took one writing gig like six or seven years ago with Justin Willman, who's a genius, great magician. He he puts he's the Netflix guy now, and uh, um. I took the job because uh, Robert Morton, who used to be the executive producer of Letterman, was the EP of this. Anyway, I take the job just because it's a short two, four week. We're making a pilot for this magician. I'm like, I like magic. Magic's cool. And Morty's the EP. So this will be a cool thing to work on, right? Short job. So I show up day one. And basically, we're all in a big writer's room or whatever. And I go, yeah, you know. I'll, and they're like, we got Tony here because he's, a, you know, he's going to add some edge to the comedy on this show because it was a comedy. It was Comedy Central's first ever magic comedy show, the pilot. And and I go, yeah, you know, I'll punch up whatever. You guys show me the tricks that you want to do and I'll write jokes around the trick. And that's when I this is when I realized how cool this job was about to be. They go. The main guy goes, no, you write the trick. And you write the jokes. And I'm like, so you'll be able to do whatever my imagination thinks would be a cool magic trick. And like him and like four other magicians, which was basically the rest of the creative staff at the same time, were like, yup. And that's what excites them is because they can't even think of things. You know what I mean? They can, but they want to hear what a different mind thinks would be impossible. And then they figure out how to do it? Figure like what, out. What, what, what's an example? Well, we ended up, because it was a pilot of a show, we ended up having to figure out a theme for just the pilot. So, the, for example, the, that was uh, technology. So one of the things was him versus, him versus a 3D printer uh, um, in making th- things appear. It, it was really funny. Because there was this kid, they went to this, we ended up finding this like nerdy smart school where this kid was excited about his 3D printer. And basically it was, it was just him making things appear out of absolutely nowhere while one kid was still printing one thing with a 3D printer. It took forever and he ended up just pigeon, 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 card, 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 card. Like it ended up being, you know, it's a comedy. So, but, um. I'm trying to think of what other ones. There were some really crazy ones. I think it's a, a whole world yeah. where there's there's things that they understand, they know, where the average person, like, you're looking at a deck of cards, you have an idea of what's possible with with that deck of cards, but they have just 10x times more yeah. options, how to hold them, how to move them, how to maneuver those cards, how to distract you with the other hand. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to hang around with David Blaine for a few months Yeah, and watch him do tricks. It ended up I- being one of the most fun gigs I ever worked on. There was just, I'd get home after uh, a day of work and I'd find like the seven of spades in my shoe. I'm like, this guy <laughs> forgot to finish that he one stuffed, trick. He stuffed a folded card under Jeff's uh, watch band. Wow. And he's like, uh, where's the card? And, he, and Jeff's like, where did it go? He goes, look at your wrist. And he's like, what? And he like realized like it was folded 
and stuffed under his watch band. And he has a fucking G-Shock, right? So yeah. it's it's not like a loose, crazy watch band. It's a tight buckle, rubber strap watch band. He stuffs it in there. And he's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, what the fuck? No one saw it. Yeah. And that's Jamie, a- you were filming some of it, right? Didn't you uh, film some of it? Other people did. So I, I was wondering. I was a, I big. I was a big fan of his growing up because I was like a huge fan of Magic, David Copperfield. But like after I figured out how fake that was, moved into Street Magic because it's a little harder to do, you know. And that's what he was big on. So I was a, waiting my whole life to watch him up close and Amazing. got to be two feet from. Like I said, and I wanted to just, I wanted to try to catch him. And he, and he was so good at it. He did like seven tricks in front of me. Can't catch. He's him. a really nice guy. Really nice guy. Like genuinely nice on camera, off camera with everybody, with security guys, with uh, my family, with everybody. Like you could tell, it's just really nice, friendly, genuine guy. But some of the stuff he does is fucking weird. Like he made me shove an ice pick through his bicep. Yeah, what was that like? I mean, are you what? what? <sighs> Here's the thing. Yeah. Um, it's not a trick, right? It's just pain, and um. I think pain is just a sensation, right? And if you could just tolerate the sensation, it's not deadly. And one time I hit a nerve and we had to back it out and do it again. I had to do it a second time because I got in there and he said, stop, stop, stop. Like it hit the nerve. (laughs) So I had to back out and do it again. I think it was supposed to be more disturbing and impressive than I reacted to it because – um. First of all, I'm used to pain. You know, I've been doing martial arts most of my life. So I'm always hurt. I've, I've had a bunch of surgeries. And also, I've butchered animals. Like, I understand right. muscle tissue, and I'm not. It's just like, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. It was more, why are we doing this than, oh my God, I can't believe we're doing this. Like, that one was not a good one for me because it's like, okay, like, I could do that too. Like, if you want to shove that through my arm, I could just sit here. Well, he shoved that through my arm. I wouldn't like it, though. Did he bleed? Yeah, he bled a little bit. Yeah. We had to stop and refilm because he had, like, a little bit of a hematoma. Right, Jamie? Wasn't it? Like, a little... Building up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the, the security guys had to put, like, a fucking Band-Aid on it and shit and check it out. Some One of them's a medic. How do you I, think... He, do you think he went through the muscle? I, I pushed it through his fucking arm, dude. Yeah, like his muscle. A hundred percent. Not between the bone and the muscle. No. No, I shoved it through his muscle. 100%. How, but you, you how, can do that, How though. thick was it? The needle? It was an ice pick. But I'm telling you, you can do that. You know, there's guys. This is one of the things that we found out during the show that I didn't know. There's guys that, use, that would shove swords through their body. Their whole gig was shoving swords through their body. And we watched it live. We, I mean, not live. We watched videos of these guys shoving swords through this one guy's body who was famous for it. So it would take like a, a long, thin sword, and they'd shove it through his chest and would come out the other end. And he'd just be standing there with his sword through him. Yeah, so here's me. Did you see this? No. So here's me I shoving. about it. What? He, yeah, I, he's like showing me how to do it. Like the... push it through here. Yeah, just shove it through. No. Yeah, poked it right through. 100% real. But again, that's not the best one for me. Because if you're a person who's like, doesn't necessarily see a lot of um, pain, or you haven't used to like surgery or someone getting, like if you did that to a doctor, right? The doctor would be like, okay, I see what you're doing. Just pushing something through the muscle and it probably hurts, right? It's not a good joke or a trick it's not a it's not an illusion you're just doing something that hurts like okay like steve-o could do that steve-o's probably done that a hundred times he does things like yeah. that yeah even with the crit did he go to clown college or something like that i yep. think but steve-o yeah. climbed like in a that, fucking yeah. tree and had lions come chasing after him yeah like he's he's the best yeah he does a lot of shit he that did hurts. the frog thing too though which oh, is like right. another that was a different thing he swallowed a frog he swallowed a shitload of water so during the podcast he probably drank <laughs> Look at you. It's so 15, funny. he probably drank 15 <laughs> bottles of water or something crazy. And then he swallowed this frog. And then the frog is in his stomach with all the water that he swallowed. And then he spit up the water slowly but surely in a bucket. We had an ice bucket on the table. 
and then he eventually got to the point where he felt the frog coming up and he spit the frog out into my hand. Okay. Good lord. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to do it. Episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience are now free on Spotify. That's right. They're free. From September 1st to December 1st, they're going to be available everywhere. But after December 1st, they will only be available on Spotify, but they will be free. That includes the video. The video will also be there. It'll also be free. That's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye. Mm.